Hi everyone, today I want to talk about a little bit less known but very powerful Vim feature called external commands. This essentially boils down to the ability to use external commands through Vim or from within Vim and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So let's start. First of all, uh, when I say external commands, I mean commands available within your shell. So typically, if you run Linux or Windows with WSL or other systems, you would have access to well-known commands like ls for listing files, find, replace, move, and so on. And those are the types of commands we can call from within the Vim or NeoVim. It works the same um, command line. So first type of commands we have, um, by the way, all commands start from the command line mode. Uh, you can watch my other video about Vim, which um, introduces all those concepts. The link will be somewhere above. Command line mode, we enter through typing a colon and then bang or exclamation mark would tell Vim to execute a shell command and display its output. Another interesting thing we can do, we can use the R keyword, which is a short for read, and we can read into a file, so insert into a file right below the cursor, a result of command, which as you can imagine is pretty useful. Another one is uh, W, which is short for write. We can send current buffer through standard in, to a standard in of a command, which again, uh, I will show you a few examples of each uh, of those types of commands, which is really useful. One more interesting thing we can do is we can use um, special placeholders. In this case, a dot is a placeholder that represents a current line. So for dot exclamation mark, we can replace the current line with a command output and take the current line as std in or a command input. That's one of the most useful features that uh, we will explore. We can also use a percent sign, which is a placeholder representing an entire file. And finally, another quite interesting is the ability to execute uh, a command, feeding it a selection as an input. All right, so let's dive in. The first example I want to look at is the bank or exclamation mark, uh, exclamation mark and the command. And here we can see how we can use a quick file backup. Imagine that you have a file called backupmd, which you can see on the top here. And then I can execute this command. So let me just copy it. I'm going to drop into command line, hit Control R for the buffers, and then um, quotation mark to uh, use the default buffer. So now we execute command copy and we use percent sign to represent the current file and we simply append um, the word new underscore to it. So when we do it, we will see command executed and the created new underscore backup dot md file. We can actually list those files uh, by saying something like Again, entering command line, exclamation mark, ls, and then new for the new file and star. That would work as you expect in normal command line. So we have this file present, and that's one of the very useful things we can do uh, to really quickly move files, copy them, remove. Uh, you can imagine uh, there's all kinds of uses for, for this. But again, the copy is just an example. You can execute any other command and see the output uh, in the window below, this output will be also available in the messages buffer, Vim or NeoVim. All right, let's move on. So that was one example. Another one is to read. So you can read a result, a command into a file. That one is really interesting. So for instance, here I have a few examples. First, we can read a date. So this would work as you imagine. Let me make here a little bit of space and I can say again dropping to the command line hitting R space exclamation mark and date and this entered right below the cursor I was in I was on the top line and it answered entered the current date. I can also 
insert an output of list command. So let's do this now. So make myself a little bit more room. So I am here on line number four. Again, dropping to colon R exclamation mark ls. And I have all the files here. I delete those. And finally, I can also add this show uh, the backup file. So let's do this as well. I'm going to delete those things here. Enter a little bit more buffer. And we can do the same here. So drop to the command line R exclamation mark cut. And I have a auto completion in the command line, so I can list the content of the backup file that we've seen earlier. Very, very useful um, to insert things like dates, or if you can imagine you are curling something maybe and you want to have an output of it right in your file. So without leaving NeoVim or Vim buffer, you can enter the command. Uh, makes things much easier. Another example that is um, really practical as well is using the w command uh, to send the buffer, so the content of what you see on the screen, um, to uh, another external command. This is a little bit confusing because w is used to save a file, which is stands for write. Um, however, it's kind of easy to understand because we are writing a file not into a file system, but we are writing a file into another command. So I think that's a little bit easier to understand. Um, so here, for example, let's imagine we have various file names that we generated really quickly with NeoVim. Maybe you have more than five, 20. And let's say that we would like to create those files. So let me prove to you that those files don't exist by listing uh, again. You can see there is no file one, file two, and so on in current directory. How can we create them? Super easy. We do again w for sending all the content to the buffer. Then what we have to do is we have to use xargs because we want to prepend a file name to a touch command. And then we do touch. Then we don't have any errors. And again, if we list all the files uh, in the buffer, you will see that the file one and two all were created. So you can imagine how useful it is. You can make, you know, tarballs out of it, uh, anything really that you can take a content of your file and pass it to other commands. We will see a little bit more examples in it. Uh, think of, you know, formatting JSON, sorting file, um, counting words, counting lines, all those things are available. All right. Um, Line and selection manipulation, I think this is one of the most um, interesting use cases and certainly something I use quite a lot. I even have a few um, shortcuts or key bindings I will show you at the very end uh, how I deal with it. So let's imagine that you have a base64 encoded string. We have this in this file. So we want to take this string, so copy it, and then feed it to base64 decode command. So obviously I don't have to, as you can imagine, leave NeoVim and copy it, but rather I can simply again drop to command line, hit dot, that represents the current line I'm on, then exclamation mark and then base 64 minus D for decode. And we decoded the line. So Vim external commands are indeed very useful. All right. Next one is as I mentioned earlier, JSON formatting. Imagine that you have this big blob of JSON that is not formatted and you want to see this uh, in, a, in a pretty way. You don't need to use any internal LSP mechanism. Uh, you can just do a JQ. So let's do this. So again, dropping the command line, dot representing the current line, exclamation mark and JQ dot gives me a really nice um, overview of JSON. As a side note, you can also use JQ to filter uh, JSON. So you could use something like, um, as earlier we did, so again, dropping to command line, uh, exclamation mark, and then we do JQ and maybe something like dot name. 
uh, you could filter also names and so on. So really fast and much easier than uh, dropping out of NeoVim. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, we can also sort. Uh, this one is really interesting because you can see those little um, angle brackets on the left in point three here. Those are actually representing a selection. So when I select something in Vim, uh, here I am using a text object, an action VIP, which is select visually in paragraph. And I drop to command line, you can see that at the bottom I have actually those, those weird signs. Uh, Vim adds them automatically to your selection. So how can we sort this? So we've already have a selection. Now we do exclamation mark, sort, then um, minus n for numbers, as you, as you would expect. The first line is not uh, touched at all, and then we have all our all our file sorted. Um, so, as I promised earlier, here is some of my key bindings that I use. You can kind of get really creative with those. So, something which I really like is this uh, leader ex, which uh, for me is execute. So, whenever I have um, a line in the file that is an actual bash command, I can actually use this ex to execute it as a bash command. So imagine that you have just, you know, a bunch of curl commands in your file. So you can just uh, drop to the line. It's a normal mode binding, and you can execute the line, and bash will just execute the curl. The same with capital X. It executes a whole file. So again, having a bunch of curl statements within the file, you can execute all of them like this. Um, leader EL is execute current line and replace it with the results. So remember, dot represents current line. And then we would essentially take this example curl and we would replace the, whatever we are pulling from it and put it back into a file. And the same for um, whole file. One little neat trick uh, that I uh, picked up somewhere, I think it was from, from Prime, uh, you can actually use the CX, which is really useful if you want to uh, change uh, grant executable permissions to a script you're writing. I use it all the time. So instead of, again, dropping out from a uh, command line or doing something a little bit more complicated, you can just type leader, which is space in my case, leader CX, and you have uh, your file with executable permission. You can also go uh, much more um, advanced, so to say, or creative than that. Uh, so for example, here I have my own um, Lua code, um, which is also, I'm converting it currently to a plugin. What it does is it takes a whole, whole file, let's say it's a script, and it executes it as a script. So it executes the file as a script and it shows the output in a nice uh, uh, Hoover um, uh, Hoover window over the current buffer. So you can go, you know, as complicated or as crazy as you like. But but I find those shortcuts to be really useful, and I am using external commands all the time. They are extremely useful. Something that other editors uh, don't have, and you can really feel how Vim or NeoVim integrate very, very well with the terminal using those commands. So let's recap real quick. Um, we talked about Vim external commands and how powerful they are. Um, we can use um, exclamation mark and a command name for quickly executing a command and displaying output in the window below. We can use R or read and the command to uh, pull the output of the command in the current buffer in the current file. We can use W or write to take the current buffer as input and provide it as standard in to a command. Finally, we can use dot or percent, percent sign, centered sign as placeholders for either a line or a whole file. And then we can take those and replace uh, with whatever command output comes back. And we also uh, learned how to use visual selection and feed it to a uh, command. So those custom key bindings, you also looked at them briefly. Uh, you can create obviously your own. Um, 
and you know you can you can do much more with it uh, you can for example have your own bash scripts and your own functions uh, that you can call from uh, from those uh, from the command line um, and you can execute them as long as they return something you can show it um, which is you know really really useful all right so uh, i hope you We've learned something about Vim external commands and how powerful it can be uh, for any workflow, really. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you found it useful, you would like me to uh, create something similar or iterate over uh, any topic we've covered here. Otherwise, thanks and see you in the next video.